So, hello everyone again and welcome to another microscopy live stream. Microbe Hunter here and it's Saturday again and uh, today I wanted uh, to put a water sample under the microscope. I would like uh, to talk about Pyramis and I would like to show you how you can um, yeah, grow them. Um, and uh, you probably have already realized that uh, I have now a uh, yeah a little tiny microphone next to my mouth. Um, and uh, therefore, um, as always, I would like to ask you for a little sound check, uh, whether you're able to hear me loud and clear and hopefully not too loud um, because uh, the head uh, yeah, headset that I'm using right now does give me a little bit more freedom. I can move around. I don't have to be very close uh, to my desktop uh, microphone. Yeah, so sound way better even. Uh, that's that's even nice. Oh, okay, that's uh, really good. So um, what I'm going to do today um, is a little bit similar to last week. Um, I'm going to use the first uh, part uh, of this live stream to simply show you a few things. Um, in the meantime, you can post comments uh, in uh, into the chat uh, box, uh, and you, I have, I'm seeing that that many people are already starting to post comments to say hello. Um, yeah, also please tell me from where you're from. Um, and uh, um, yeah, it's a bit too much. Somebody says, so I'm going to go down a little bit with uh, with the, the sound here, okay? Um, but it's loud and clear. It has a bit of a buzz. So I, I went down a little bit now with the sound uh, in you know, loudness. So I hope it's it's better now, okay? Yeah, uh, yeah. So this uh, basically, um, yeah. Um, in the meantime, please do post. In the meantime, please uh, do post um, uh, comments. Um, I will talk about those comments later on. So I'll go through the chat and answer your questions. Um, so that those people who are not so much interested in the question and answer part today, you can then basically uh, <laughs> click off. I hope that you don't do that, <laughs> but at least you have this possibility uh, because I know that in some places of the world, um, yeah, it's uh, in the middle of the night. Okay, and uh, yeah, so therefore, um, yeah, I'm going to separate this. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is, is um, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, uh, about, uh, um, yeah, um, about some paramecia that I've uh, got here. And uh, it's actually a very simple and straightforward thing, um, but uh, I'm simply going to show you um, in any case. So what I've got over here is a, a water sample, a pond water sample. You can see it's it's green, There's some green algae in here. Uh, usually when you collect um, when you collect uh, pond water, then always make sure that you always collect a little bit of solid material as well, some solid, um, yeah, like uh, decomposing leaves or some sediment from the, the bottom of the pond or its stream. Um, and uh, when you put this under the microscope, you're, if you're lucky and chances are pretty good, you're going to find uh, some interesting microorganisms. But if you really want to have a, um, a high density um, of, uh, let's say, paramecia ciliates, then you have to feed them, okay? And you have to make sure that they grow and reproduce. Um, and I have done this here, and I'm going to now show you how I what I have actually done, okay? So I'll be using this sample over here for microscopy because uh, the, the paramecia have already reproduced quite a lot. Um, so there are many of them in here, N not quite as many as in some of my other samples that I had, but nevertheless, uh, there are quite a few of them in here. Um, and I'm just going to show you what to do. Now you can put a cap um, on those jars uh, to prevent uh, too much evaporation, but only if you make sure that there is enough air in the um, in, in the jar. That's really important, right? Uh, Pyramecia need a lot of air, like many other ciliates, they need a lot of air. And if there's not enough oxygen in here, uh, then uh, the whole thing is gonna go anaerobic. It's going to start to smell like sulfur, uh, not not so nice. Yeah. Um, occasionally, I open it up. Yeah. And if there's green material like algae in here, then um, there will generally not be an oxygen problem uh, because the algae they produce uh, oxygen okay um, so this is basically the the, the idea yeah uh, people are joining in um, that's really nice I see that the chat is now uh, quite active uh, please uh, do keep on posting um, I will go through the chat later on and uh, I'll answer some questions which you might have okay uh, but I'm going to separate this a little bit so um, so how do we do that um, I have over here, I have an empty jar. Yeah, and by the way, <laughs> just, just uh, uh, I, I prepared some salt water as well. I'm going to show you a little bit what happens when you mix salt water with paramecia. They don't like it, okay? And now that's actually the advantage of why I actually have got this uh, little uh, headset microphone because I can disappear out of sight to go over to my window to pick up a jar. Um, and uh, while you're still able to understand me what I'm saying because of the yeah of the headset okay so what I've got here is I've got a jar um, and uh, in here uh, 
just some white stuff here on the top and that's basically probably already getting a little bit moldy um and um yeah this is a, yeah some 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 uh, decomposing plant material and some pond water and if you want to now enrich a paramecia or other ciliates like for example vorticella and other interesting things if you really want to have a high density of those you have to really make sure that there is a small food chain present so what do they eat paramecia like to eat the bacteria um, and uh, the bacteria will grow um, if you add a lot of some organic material however if there are too many bacteria growing then the bacteria will take a Away the oxygen and then the paramecia can also not grow you see ah, it's a problem right uh, bacteria are an important food source but too many of them will actually uh, reduce the oxygen level that the paramecia cannot grow so we need some kind of an optimum in between um, so therefore my suggestion is, is do not overfeed so what i'm going to do now is i'm simply going to take now um, um, a sample of, of this uh, pond water yeah um, and you know what yeah I, i'll prepare it first and we're going to have a look at this um, under the microscope as well and uh, yeah i'm just going to take a pipette i'm going to take up some of this uh, uh, pond water over here uh, i'm going to i'm transferring it into another jar okay um a little bit of solid material also is okay okay um and then usually what i do is is i add some tap water as well um i found out in uh, the place where i'm uh, um, living the, the tap water is not chlorinated and it's fine um of course tap water you got to be always aware that there is going to be it's going to be an osmotic shock for the microorganisms uh, so don't add too much but um, i found out that adding a little bit generally is okay yeah do not add distilled water that's also important because distilled water is is uh, really contains too too few minerals right so but that is uh, that's okay yeah, um, a little bit um, is is generally okay. Um, the paramecia uh, they have a so-called a contractile vacuole which uh, um, pumps out excess water out of the cell. Okay, so yeah, I simply have uh, some of the okay, and now I'm going to show you what you can try to do. Uh, so um, you now do the following, and this is now where. Uh, it's getting important and then next week we're going to have a look at this sample again um what i've got over here is uh, some cereals okay some some oats some some breakfast uh, cereals um if you don't have that uh, you can also take a wheat grain a whole wheat grain and crush it between two spoons now i don't have a wheat grain but these are actually also crushed grains and what you do is is you simply take one of those really not more this is uh, yeah already quite a lot and uh, you take one of those uh, things here and you drop it into the jar okay Bloop, like this um, it's going to float it's going to start soaking up the liquid a little bit maybe later on you can push it down a little bit so that it sinks to the ground and that's it okay and then you wait around three days and what's going to happen is the following there is a lots of, uh, there's lots of starch now in this uh, in uh, in this wheat grain here and bacteria are going to start to grow and those bacteria will now be uh, serve as a food source for any paramecia that might be in here or other ciliates yeah and they will uh, re reduce the bacterial count if you overfeed um, or um, if there are too many bacteria present then the bacteria will grow faster than the paramecia are able to to eat them right so this is uh, essentially a yeah then uh, counterproductive so do not overfeed and uh, i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to just uh, add a little bit more of this um, sometimes what uh, something that also helps um, is, is to add a little bit of uh, yeah of other organic materials like some some green um, material here because this is acts as a surface and some um microorganisms vorticella um, and so on what they like to do is, is they like to attach to a surface so also include this right um and i just push down the yeah yeah the oats and and that's it okay um i put a lid on top oh yeah uh, there is plenty of air in here still so it, it's not a problem and i put it in a bright uh, place but not in a warm place so direct sunlight probably is not so good because what's going to happen is, is it's going to start to heat up it's like a little greenhouse effect that we have here um and uh um therefore it's going to drive out the oxygen again yeah. um so far honestly it's worked pretty much every time okay um and uh, the success also depends a little bit on on the type of microorganisms that are present in the first place you cannot uh, expect uh, interesting microorganisms to reproduce if there are no interesting microorganisms present in the sample in the first place
okay so having said that a couple of uh, um, safety issues now, i'm not saying it's unsafe but uh, there's some basic general hygienics that you have to adhere to look i'm um, yeah, I use those tweezers. See what I'm going to, and these tweezers are kind of pointy, pointy and, and, and sharp. Uh, what I always do is, is I always rinse them afterwards in hot water because I don't want to poke myself with uh, those tweezers because there are bacteria on here and other microorganisms. Now, I'm not saying that they're always dangerous, um, but no, you don't know what you're growing, right? And so you always have to be generally a little bit careful. Um, like with spoiled food, for example, you forget some food in there somewhere and it's starting to turn moldy and, 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 and spoiled. Or if you have a coffee machine and if, you, if you're not cleaning it, this is a really a breeding ground for fungi. <laughs> um, not healthy, obviously. Um, so I, I'm just saying uh, you got to use some, some common sense here. And, and um, I, therefore, later on, I will always, um, I will always uh, clean the pipette because yeah, it's kind of pointy. I might hurt myself. I don't want to get any dirt into my, in, in, uh, under my skin here. Yep. Um, so that's uh, some basic hygienics yeah um, and of course if you spill something you have to clean it up and uh, what i'm doing also something that i recommend just a second um, it, this is something from the time of when i was still at university in microbiology uh, we always had bottles like these standing around with 70 uh, percent alcohol so you basically seven parts alcohol and uh, and three parts water. Um, this is uh, ideal for disinfecting surfaces. Now I'm not saying that it's absolutely necessary to disinfect everything, but uh, beforehand. Um, but uh, it's not actually. But if you spill something and if you just want to clean it off and you don't want to have bacteria around, you just uh, you just use seventy percent alcohol. Okay. So, but uh, again, um, if you are yeah collecting water samples um, from a pond or so then you've got these organisms anywhere there but as soon as you start to add some organic material like food you're really increasing the number of microorganisms yeah so this basically uh, i'm going just going to leave now for uh, for a couple of days um, you, you can check every day um, and usually what happens is that for the first two days pretty much nothing much happens right and then it really goes fast and uh, this one over here is now already i think five or six days old I should have written down when I put it in here. And this one is already a little bit too much. And I will show you why. Because if you look very carefully, yeah, it's green, but the water itself is turbid, it's cloudy. And if water is cloudy, then this is a sign that there are a lot of bacteria present. Um, so it could be that the bacteria started to reproduce faster than the paramecia and other ciliates could keep up with. Right, um, so it's a little bit probably a little bit of an overkill. Uh, that's one problem. And the second problem, it's not a big problem really, but it's something just you might want to consider, is that the the, the cereal is all the way in the bottom here, so it's kind of hard to reach. So I have to go all the way in, right? Okay, um, to 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 have a look at this. So what I'm gonna do, however, before we have a look at uh, at those paramecia, um, uh, then um, I'm going to simply going to look at have a look at this here first and when i looked at this a couple of days ago um there was not so much interesting stuff in here okay uh so i don't uh, think that uh, we have too many high expectations about this original sample here but the other one um, i checked uh, today there are a few uh, quite a few of them here so what i'm gonna do is i uh, pick out and um, i've been doing this already several times so for those of you who are uh, not uh, have been part of this live stream before you already know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, you simply dip a little bit some of the solid material here. Okay, things will come off. Okay, like I don't know, yeah, whatever can be found here. And if there's a little bit of green material like right now, then this is a sign that there are probably lots of uh, um, uh, lots of diatoms here. A cover glass goes on top. I already wiped them off to save a little bit of time. Okay, and we're going to have a look at this, and uh, we're probably not going to see um, a lot. Okay, so let's not have uh, too high expectations here, but I'm doing that simply to show you a little bit of what's to expect after a couple of days after you've added some some cereals. Okay, um, so nobody's complaining about my uh, my sound quality <laughs> anymore. So I think uh, uh, maybe yeah, I got the settings correct now because I've not heard myself yet uh, with this microphone. Um, yeah because every microphone setting is different, but I do have a little bit more freedom in moving around. So let's have a look at the scene microscope here. Okay. And uh, I have to flip out the condenser and that's basically what we're seeing here. I do not see a lot of move. Ah, there's, there's, there seems to be like a rotter for here. Look, I've got the arrow. The arrow is still here. Yeah, this seems to be an, a rotter. This seems to be a rotter 
but I don't really see a lot of, um, as expected, I don't see a lot of uh, um, yeah, uh, paramecia here. So let's go up with the magnification, okay? Refocus a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move this a little bit to the side here, okay? Yeah, let's get the arrow out of the way. Yeah. And uh, as uh, I already mentioned before, there is a natural progression. So after a couple of days, you're going to see again, different uh, microorganisms and so on, right? But uh, yeah, I think uh, we can all agree that the density here is not so high um, and uh, that's as expected, okay? Let's look, there's even a, there's a dead rotifer over here, this one over here. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so this just as a, a yeah, uh, yeah, so that lots of debris, decomposing material, those tiny dots in the background, most likely bacteria, Ah, that's an, um, this here is the uh, so the shell, uh, the test of an amoeba. Okay, um, so um, yeah, the this uh, hay infusion that I've got here um, actually was uh, very very active uh, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, uh, then I accidentally <laughs> let it dry up completely and uh, I added more water and uh, some microorganisms survived this procedure, right? So of course it shouldn't dry up, right? So um, yeah, so this is basically how this looks like and now let's uh, switch over to the, uh, to the um, uh, uh, paramecia um, a little bit. Uh, so to this uh, water sample where I added a little bit of, of, of uh, cereal Okay, and um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to take a, a new slide now. And um, here we have to, let me switch over again to the desk. And here something that's, yeah, here we go. Something that's now very important is the following. How much liquid should we use? You have to know that the uh, paramecia, they have this tiny little hair on the surface. They move uh, through the water fairly quickly. They don't, they don't stop so very often. Occasionally they rest a little bit to gather some food when they found a favorable place, but then they continue to move. Very difficult to chase them, especially if the, uh, the, the concentration of the paramecia is kind of low, right? And you only see a, a few of them. You, you want to chase them with a microscope and they're already gone, right? Um, sometimes uh, if there's too much water, they also go vertically uh, up and down. So they, you lose focus. Uh, okay. So, if you really want to uh, observe paramecia well, you have to make sure that they're kind of squeezed in between the cover glass and the microscope slide, okay? Um, so don't use too much water. They're kind of squeezed in and they're not able to, to move forward very quickly. If you wait and if water starts to evaporate, what's gonna happen is, is that there's gonna be less and less and less and less water um, and the paramecia and the cells are gonna be squeezed apart. It's almost like, I don't know, you can see that they start to go apart because they're being compressed. And if you wait even longer and there's even less and less water, then you're gonna pop open and the cells contents are gonna spill out. And yeah, it looks kind of cool, <laughs> okay? Um, so uh, you have to find a, uh, somewhat of an in intermediate, uh, an intermediate uh, um, um, amount. Um, and when this happens, the good thing is, is that you're also able to see the cell organelles much better, yeah, right? And uh, because there is um, the whole paramecium from the top and the bottom is in focus because of the depth of field. And this uh, means that um, you can actually see also, um, and I hope we're able to see this today also, how the paramecia take in bacteria and how they make a food vacuole. Yeah? Um, and you cannot see that when they're swimming around, right? So you have to limit their movement a little bit. So what I'm doing here right now is, is in order to make sure that there is a, um, a, uh, a small amount of, of, of liquid here, is, is we have to make sure that we do not include any solid material on the microscope slide. So uh, no large algae or anything, but really, if possible, mostly only liquid, okay? So what I'm gonna do therefore is, is I'm going to first, um, yeah, simply show you um, the following. I'm going to go in and I'm going to take out the cereal here and it starts to look quite slimy already. Yeah, and I'm just going to dip it here on the side. Yeah, and um, I'm going to put it back. I hope I got the cereal. I hope this was the cereal now that I got. Um, I've tried in the past also um, uh, other things like cornflakes, small pieces of cornflakes. I've tried rice as well. But the problem with those is, is, I mean, they also work, but the problem with those is, is that they start to fall apart and it's very difficult to pick them up. 
okay so and what i've got done here is, is now i was able to pick up a small part of the cereal and uh, there's a small drop uh, here and um, this is not a lot of uh, liquid okay as expected and uh, i'm going to simply add a, a cover glass and the reason why i'm using uh, the side here is, is simply so that i have a little bit more space later on, on on the other side as well cover glass goes on top as always yeah and uh, it goes under the microscope okay and let's have a look so i'm going to close first uh, this here again otherwise i'm going to tip it over and then yeah okay and uh, yeah scene microscope again and now i'm going to add the slide so i will start at the lower magnifications first again to make sure that everything is focused properly okay that's a nice demonstration effect because where are they <laughs> Uh, are those things are all starch grains all starch grains hey that, that's funny okay um because just uh, today in the afternoon there were ah that's not a lot two of them there were many more in the afternoon so maybe uh yeah I'm, maybe i'm going to try a different place um, as well those round things that you see these are the starch grains from the cereal okay Oh, come on. This is, what do you call the demonstration effect? Rather disappointing because I had so many more. Yeah? So many more. But I'm going to show you, how you what you can do to concentrate them. Uh, here is one. Okay. Here is one. And uh, it's able to move around reasonably well. Yeah? So also maybe the starch grains kind of uh, keep the, the, the cover glass from compressing it too much. But honestly, hmm. yeah, what can happen sometimes after a couple of minutes is, is that they will move to the side of the cover glass um, where there is more oxygen present. Look, this is so, so disappointing. Okay, but, um, uh, but don't worry, don't worry. Um, I was quite, uh, I'm quite convinced that, that there are a different place under the jar. There are more of them. Okay, but let's have a look at this one over here first. Why, why not? Okay, let's move the arrow out of the way here. And uh, okay, a little bit more light. Okay, so um, first of all, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how um, it will look like um, under probably under your microscope because I'm using now DIC contrasting. So what I'm doing, I'm going to remove the filter and I'm going to close the condenser a little bit. So, and that is now regular bright field, okay? So that's uh, the image that uh, most of you are probably familiar with. Yeah, yeah. yeah see the, the, it's able to move uh, quite freely still, okay? But if you, uh, here's another one, okay? But if you wanna have some color, I have to put in the, I have to put in the filter, the, or the, uh, yeah, or rather the prism and uh, then i get those nice little colors and uh, maybe if we're lucky i'm also able to find some amoeba because i know this sample contains quite a few amoeba as well okay but um you know what I i'm gonna give it another try here right okay because i'm not so happy with the the concentration of, of paramecia that we have here but uh, in any case the concentration is significantly higher than you probably would have otherwise and uh, they are still able to move around fairly quickly. So this means that there is uh, still too much, uh, too much water. Okay. So let's give it another try. Um, so I'm going to take out the, uh, the, the slide again. It's a little bit of a demonstration effect <laughs> because uh, there were quite a few of them. And uh, sometimes uh, they not only gather around the, the food, but sometimes, uh, yeah, because the bacteria, they will spread throughout the water. And sometimes the paramecia will gather where there are algae. So let's have a look here. The reason being that there is a lot of oxygen here. Okay, so let's uh, dip it here. This is again way too much. This is again way too much, uh, how do you say, uh, yeah, water. Okay, so if there's too much water, then um, I can use some tissue paper to remove some of it. Or, hmm, I'm, why not try that? Uh, look what I've got here. I've got here large cover glasses. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, this might, might be a little bit too large here. So let me move this one over. Uh, I might, might barely be able to, to put it on. Um, I have to dry wipe those because there is a, 
is a grime and smear on those cover glasses, unfortunately. Um, I think this is still from the from the production, yeah, from the manufacturing. Okay. So and uh, it actually does disturb the image quality a little bit. Um, so sometimes it does help to maybe use uh, some some alcohol um, maybe to, to wipe it off, but I think it's going to be fine. Okay, and I'm going to now use the larger cover glass uh, simply to make sure that there is a thin film of water here um, so that uh, the movement is limited. And let's have a look at this. So I don't know. That's one of the things about live streams that sometimes, yeah, you prepare, you want to show people something, but then everything is different than expected. Okay. Okay, I already see there are lots of bacteria and so on here. Lots of air bubbles. And wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> I cannot believe this. What is going on here? There's even less here. Here, these are. There were so many of them. This is fascinating. Because what happens actually is this, um, because they're able to move around freely, they sometimes gather at places that are more favorable for them. So maybe some of them actually uh, moved uh, to the surface. Ah, here, here is one. Oh, come on. That's not so cool. Okay, I'm going to give it another try. Now, now I'm really, now I'm really eager <laughs> to find out. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's give it another, let's give it another try. So here we are again. Where is the, I have to find the cereal. It's down here. I can see it. It's this white thing over here. Okay. Let's add a little bit more water. And a cover glass. Okay. So let's give it another try. I mean, there were so many of them <laughs> and now they try to avoid. Let me see. Ah, yeah, here is the large part of the cereal. Hey, is this possible? Let me let me see. Ah, a, a, a rotifer. Here's some. This is okay. Just a second. Where are they? No, this is not possible. Look, there are a whole bunch of other ciliates here. Okay, but where are my paramecia? Just today in the afternoon, I, I took the very same sample and they were full of them. But there are others here that uh, are moving around. So I'm using now the 10 times magnifying objective. Okay, let's put in DIC for better contrast. Hmm. Ha, huh, you rot the fur? Here is one. This is not very much. Here, this is a part of the cereal. You see a high, very high density here. So what I'm going to do now is, is now I'm really becoming a little bit impatient. I'm going to try it again. And I'm because this cannot be possible okay um let's have a look here maybe let's take a little sample from the surface maybe there are more um there where there is more oxygen this could be you never know let's dip a little bit here oh that's way too much this is way too much okay spread it apart a little bit and I'm going to simply put this one now under the microscope directly without cover glass simply for a quick check 
Um, I'll never do this uh, uh, when there is too much uh, water there because otherwise you risk uh, dipping the uh, the objective into uh, into the water sample. It's too dense. Yeah, there is more going on here. Okay. There is more going on here. So I think uh, I found the solution because this sample I took from the surface um, of, uh, of the jar, uh, there where there is more oxygen. Okay, here we've got a rotter for a little bit. Uh, yeah. So this is now without a uh, cover glass. Yeah. So we, what do we learn from this? Uh, don't use too much water. Um, so that there is uh, um, yeah, a large surface area so that uh, the oxygen can diffuse easily into um, uh, into the water. So another rotter for a whole bunch of smaller ciliates. Yeah, and uh, oh, that's a rotter for paradise here. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now with this is is uh, I'm going to um, take this here. I'm going to spread it a little bit more apart um, at, so that it's easier to see. And I'm going to add a cover glass, of course. So I'm going to move the other thing over. We add a little bit more water here. I'm going to spread it apart. Okay. Or better yet, not only spread it apart, but maybe put it back here. And uh, to I'm going to take another one here from the surface. Okay. And uh, now a cover glass again. Wipe it, goes on here, and let's have a look. Where is this here? This is, this. ooh, ah, what is this here? Look at this here. Some kind of a gliding algae. That's also cool. And there are plenty of other silly, it's not just Pyramecia here. Oh, look at this. This is uh, most. This is not a worm, is it? No. Looks almost like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those round things that you see, these are again the starch grains. Um, we see a lot of other um, single-celled uh, organisms. Now let me find those, the uh, significantly larger Paramecia, which I saw several of those before. Yep. And uh, don't forget that there where there is lots of food, like over here, um, there are lots of bacteria and the bacteria not only are a food source, as I mentioned before, um, but also um, they reduce the oxygen concentration as well. Okay, this is where the thing is. The... So let's me let me move over here to the other side here. Yeah. Um... So let's go down with the magnification a bit. Here, 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 finally we've got one. Okay, let's, let's, let's uh, have a closer look at this guy over here. Here it is. Yep. So yet higher. By the way, I'm uh, currently I'm working on uh, another, uh, of, like always, I'm working on another YouTube uh, video um, about Pyramecia where I actually want to show you um, how they are pro producing a food vacuole. And uh, yeah, there were plenty of Pyramecia just uh, the other day. Okay. Here is more stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, the water sample is a little bit uh, thick, therefore the, it's able to move. Uh, uh, yeah quite uh, quite actively uh, with a little bit less water it's go uh, it'd be a little bit more compressed and uh, this would limit the movement mm -hmm. yeah it's a little bit uh, of a typical microscopy session where you don't know always what to expect <laughs> 
So uh, when I show uh, these things, all, because for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm a, also a biology teacher in, in, in school, and I usually show students uh, these things here, um, also to illustrate a little bit the, the difference in cell size. Okay. Um, so what we have is, is uh, the fairly large paramecia, which is one, one cell. And then we have um, over here, um, yeah, the small diatoms that you see over here. A little bit green. Uh, these are individual cells as well. Those large round things, these are of course the starch grains uh, from the cereal. Uh, yeah, way, way too many of them. Yeah. And uh, many of these dots that you see in the background here uh, the, uh, are bacteria, which are also made of single cells. Yeah. So you see the, the whole, the wide spectrum of, of different, uh, yeah, um, yeah, cells, cell size. And then when you see a rotifer, then a rotifer is approximately made of a thousand cells. So it's a multicellular animal, which is approximately the same size as the paramecia, even though it contains thousands of cells. So um, you see, it's, it's interesting to see again a little bit this diversity in, in nature uh, concerning, yeah. Uh, but the basic organization, the, the cellular level, that on the cellular level is, is, is very similar, yeah. Basically, they're all made of cells. So see, I'm, I'm moving a little bit too far away from the, I think we, we can see quite nicely that uh, yeah, different regions beneath the microscope uh, slide have uh, different amounts of, of, of uh, microorganisms. So for example, here, this is a piece of decomposing plant material. And you see this is where a lot of the, those uh, ciliates and other microorganisms have gathered. Because like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a food source as well. So, so, but I, I tell you, I think I think uh, for next week, just <laughs> I, I think I'm really going to prepare uh, several uh, different specimen samples simply to show you a little bit the, the extremely high concentration because I've had uh, samples where there were so many of them next to each other. Um, that is, it was almost impossible to see the individual cells because they were so almost stacking on top of each other. So, you know what? I'm going to try the um, a, a last time, and uh, then I'm, I'm going to have a look at some of your questions which you might have or comments which you might have. Okay, I need to switch over again to the desk view. <laughs> so I just read a comment, poor microbe hunter, I can feel your pain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's have a look here. Up. Oh. It's again a slightly different, uh, a different uh, sample here. Let's put this back here. Let's put it apart. A little bit more water. And we separate this to make sure that uh, everything is nice and flat afterwards. And uh, we add another cover glass. It could be um, as well that the sample which I prepared a few days ago um, is uh, already what we call, call beyond stationary. So what, what we have is we have a very low number of microorganisms at the beginning, then we have an exponential growth, it goes uh, stationary. And then later on, maybe as the oxygen level drops again, the, the number goes down again. And that could, could be that it's simply a little bit uh, too old already. Um, maybe just a day or two too old. So here we go again. I need to have here and uh, too much light and okay. Yep, we see that here is one. Yeah, they're all hiding here behind the the plant material. Yep. I think uh, they like to be there around the plant material simply because there is uh, 
again because of the oxygen concentration which might be higher there. So, yep, oh, but still, here, here, here we go. I'll hear a few. Um, there are also other things that you can try uh, that I have tried. Uh, what you can try to do is you can make a so-called a milk culture. What you take is you take a water sample and you, you add a very small amount of milk uh, because the fat droplets in the milk will serve as a food source. This also works. And uh, you can also use milk powder or you can also add some yogurt um, or ye and or yeast. And uh, something that uh, is possible um, as well as is some, you can also uh, then see how the yeast cells um, are taken up by the, cell, by the paramecia and how then they're digested. Yeah. Uh, that's here is a, well, yeah, a rotifer. Can you see that they're um, in comparison, size comparison, similar in size uh, to the paramecia, even though um, the rotifers are made of uh, uh, multiple cells. Okay. Okay, well, you know what, folks? Mm. I think I'll have a look at the chat. <laughs> this is uh, kind of funny as well. It's one of the unexpected things in live streams because... Uh, of course, I look at the samples beforehand because I want to make sure that uh, everything works out. And I did and everything worked out. And uh, for whatever reason, I'm not able to find the same amount as I used to find just yesterday. <laughs> yep, you know what? I will have a look at the chat now. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh. I see that there are already lots of comments. Um, I will skip over. I will skip over uh, those comments that are not uh, directly microscopy related because some of you have been talking uh, to each other as well. Okay, um, so a big uh, hello section from from the beginning, which I'm going to skip over. Okay, and there was the sound issue. Okay, some people are joining in from the middle of the night. Okay, let me see. Uh, microbe hunter, what if I don't have a starter culture? This is a uh, uh, yeah posted by Tini. Um, first of all, um, you can buy paramecia online uh, because they're used also as fish food. Number one, number two, if you have a natural place uh, around you, uh, some natural water, um, a pond, uh, yeah, or or a stream, it's got to be several days old at least so just because it rained and you've got a puddle which is a day old is not it's, that's not going to work right but if um, if it's already several days old like maybe a week or so um, or older then chances are pretty good that you're going to find uh, um, uh, uh, microorganisms especially if there is uh, some organic material in there okay like like plants or so 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 far i've always found something but again not always in the concentration maybe that you would like to have and that's why you um i added a little bit of food here okay okay um i never use this account for videos but if you want i can post my insta oh, okay yeah so there's some a little bit of talk going on between in the community okay um, isn't that the hay infusion that I saw a few live streams ago? It could be because I try to keep my hay infusions um, alive um, as long as possible uh, to see the progression of microorganisms um, because um, with the changing light situation, with changing age, um, the microorganisms also change. So for example, in this sample, I had a, a lot of uh, mites. Uh, uh, which I don't see so many, many right now, um, and uh, yeah, and then it kind of changes over time, and that's also an interesting thing to observe. Um, so that's uh, one of the reasons why I kind of uh, try to keep them alive as 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 long as possible. Yeah, it's a tricky balance. Yep, just make sure you only grow the bacteria in a uh, marmalade glass and not in a petri dish. Otherwise, you're going to need a laboratory license. Well, let's put it this way. Um, Growing bacteria on agar medium, um, basically on, um, is uh, something where um, you got to be extremely careful with uh, because uh, some bacteria, yeah, could be harmful. 
okay but uh, also you have to be a little bit you have to stick to general hygienics when you're growing those uh, microorganisms here as well but uh, then again if you have um, if you're swimming in a pond for example or in a, in a lake um, then yeah, on the bottom there are is much decomposing material anyway right and uh, so yeah the concentration of microbes might be also quite high there but then when you're adding food uh, then of course you're increasing it even more and you want to keep the amount of bacteria low by making sure that there's plenty of oxygen present so that the so that the paramecia are able to to eat them before they're able to reproduce too quickly okay um in Austria, you need an official license, or at least you have to tell the authorities if you want to cultivate bacteria. Unless no, it isn't. That's not uh, quite correct. It depends. Um, it depends on the on the category that you're uh, working in, um, and uh, so this is means uh, for category two. Uh, so for higher um, elevated safety categories, um, you're not allowed to to do that, right? Um, but uh, essentially, um, yeah. What happens if you're making yogurt at home? Okay, you're, you're taking milk um, and you're adding yogurt bacteria. You're growing bacteria, right? Uh, so it depends also on a very much on the extent if uh, do you actually know uh, which bacteria you're growing? Or if you make kefir, kefir is actually a, um, yeah, a, a community of, of, of fungi and, 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 and bacteria, right? And people make kefir at home. Um, if you make sauerkraut, you're multiplying lactic acid uh, bacteria. So it really depends on the type of bacterium here, okay? Um, so, but the labs, uh, they need, uh, of course, because they're working, uh, it depends on also with, if you're working with E. coli, which is, a, a, yeah, which is not so much of a problem, then it's a different issue than, for example, if you're working with unknown bacteria, right? Um, yeah, your performance, quality, and dedication are incredibly inspiring. Thank you very much. Uh, but I was kind of hoping to find a little bit more interesting samples uh, here today. Um, yeah, black mold is no good. Yep, in the mycology world, they're saying when in doubt, uh, toss it out for safety. Yes, okay, of course. Microscopy for, uh, for problematic stuff, you could get uh, rounded tweezers like, yep. There are some tweezers uh, that are essentially not pointed, uh, but that are actually, um, yeah, you can um, stamp collectors. What they have is they have special tweezers as well, which are completely flat. And they might actually be also useful to pick up very delicate uh, objects, uh, insects or so, that you don't want to press too much when they're pointed. Yeah? But um, it might also be a safety issue. Yeah? So when they're flat, then of course you cannot hurt yourself. Okay. Um, uh, a bit of a weird question, but how old are you? I will, okay, it's fine, it's fine. And I will tell you that I look younger than I actually am. Um, I am 50. Yes, I know some of you are going to be surprised now because you thought that I'm around 30. But actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to be 51 coming May. Yeah. Um, so many uh, uses uh, in its uh, wild. I'm going to be using mine to check for yeast and sugar content for a mesh in the future. Okay. I think it's awesome that someone who's as young as you are is so dedicated to science. Well, keep it up. Uh, that's fantastic. The world needs people like you. I think you're referring to our 11 year old uh, participant here. Microscope makes life so much easier. Um, if you didn't know, you'd never need one. Yeah. Um, I just like micro that's all, thank you. Okay, so far there's not a lot of questions, that's also okay. I know because you said it's an early live stream, I'm 11 as well, I'm turning 12 in a few months. Uh, do you have a microscope? During the last years I made several hay infusions and had good results uh, getting paramecia, but after some months I got mold on the surface, although the glass was only covered with a piece of was a yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I think uh, the white things that I see over here in my jar that's also moldy. Um, yeah, that's uh, something that we can of course expect. Um, mold is uh, a heterotroph; it likes to eat organic material, and uh, when you see that, uh, yeah, when there's organic material present, you'll find mold um, as well. Sometimes it's growing on the surface, but uh, I've also seen some mold actually growing inside, of course, um, inside the liquid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, let me quickly scroll down. Uh, beside of wheat, uh, would low concentration of table sugar with decomposed organic materials work for growing them as well? Um, uh, possibly, but every time when you add a uh, something like uh, like uh, sugar or so, you're changing the osmotic balance. You got to be careful with that. 
Um, so um, because uh, especially high concentrations of sugar are used to, to also preserve food. Um, so is it possible? Sure. Um, but um, yeah, I've not tried it. I have to be honest. Uh, the standard way of, of growing paramecia, the one that's also mentioned quite often in literature, is either by making a milk culture, adding a very small amount of milk, and then you have to wait until um, over the next couple of days the milk starts to the, the liquid starts to clear again. This is a sign that the milk fat droplets are eaten up by the paramecia, or to use wheat grains. Yeah. But, but I think, uh, honestly, I, I think that I have overfed this specific sample. Look at all of the, the starch grains here. And I could, I think that this actually contributed to a drop in oxygen, right? And usually what you see then later on is that sometimes in, in certain places uh, under the microscope slides, the, the cells, the, the, the yeah, paramecia and so on will start to accumulate there where there is more oxygen present. Yeah. Um, so now there is, okay, there are some questions here. Do you post uh, your clips? Okay, good to know. I got the Swift 380T and I love it. Yep, you're right. Paramecium is running like at speed of light. It's hard to chase. Um, okay, so there's again some communication going on within the community here. My image quality is very good. I remember it took me almost two hours to install an app for my microscope camera. Ah, okay. Uh, everybody was looking forward for this. Okay, the camera is connected to my computer. I have special app on my computer to connect it. I should be getting my stereo microscope on Tuesday. Ah, that's nice. Okay. Coincidentally, I also use my computer. Heck yeah. It's good tool to have extra. <laughs> okay. Uh, I remember how happy I was when I found my first Rotifer. <laughs> Thank you. I need okay. So my, my suggestion is the following. I, I do want to uh, address a, a point that I that somebody actually um, posted in, in in one of the comments uh, sections, and uh, I actually did make uh, an, a um, in the Q and A session um, in one of the previous videos. I actually also addressed this. Is this that some people were kind of worried about losing interest in microscopy? Kind of uh, how do you keep yourself motivated? Um, and I think the following, I want to use today's live stream as an example. Um, I was absolutely convinced that I'm able, able to show you, I don't know, thousands of paramecia floating around like I was, I was able to see a few days ago. Um, but for whatever reason, there are very few. Right. So how can I keep myself motivated by figuring out what went wrong? <laughs> so that is one of the things as well. You keep on trying. And um, if there are failures or some unexpected uh, results, you try to figure out what's going on. So what I'm trying to say is, is you try to keep pushing the level a little bit. Um, if you're happy finding the first rotifer or the first water bear, uh, that's even a bigger challenge, I would say. You feel really happy. I remember several years ago, many years ago, it was the same for me. But um, yeah, sooner or later you start to get used to that and then you have to push the, the, the your bar a little bit higher. Uh, the next thing would be, okay, let's try to identify which uh, genus could it be or which type of rotifer could it be. And then you need to read up a little bit and then you, you try to get some identification books or websites and then you try to, to, to learn a little bit more about the organisms that you see. And if you keep on doing that and keep trying to educate yourself, then there is also less risk that you're going to get bored. Okay, because if you just uh, keep on watching the same things over and over again, and then of course, uh, sooner or later, it's, it's going to get boring, right? But I just wanted to say that because I, I got a question the other day um, um, about that. Um, so, yeah, okay, you have uh, to have a CD to put on the computer. Uh, methyl cellulose slows them down nicely for observation or a little time in the fridge helps too, yes. And there is uh, some, com I think Carolina Biologicals, it's called, it's uh, in the United States, a, a company. Uh, they sell a product called ProtoSlow, ProtoSLO, um, which is, maybe it is methyl cellulose, um, and uh, which slows down the movement of, of paramecia as a, as well. Yeah. Um, okay. No wonder those paramecia are so quick with all that color change and light flicker they're going to think in a disco. Okay. Yeah. I just connected the microscope camera to my computer. Okay. I just have to open the app and then my image appears. 
Yeah, there are indeed, um, um, yeah, microscope apps and that you can download or they come with a CD. And then usually those apps allow you to take pictures, of course, um, and also to make measurements. Yeah. So I run my cam off OBS just if I were getting ready to live stream. Yep. That's by the way, for those of you who are connecting a camera, um, sometimes uh, uh, when I've got my USB microscope camera, I need to use a special software, the one that came with the camera. But luckily OBS is also able to recognize the camera. But it's not the camera is not recognized otherwise. So um, you have to also do a little bit trial and error, but I'm actually able to also get the, the USB camera in, into OBS. To, to actually show you. But what I'm doing here right now is, is I'm not using a, a USB camera. I'm using my DSLR camera, which um, also is able to go over USB uh, into, in, in, into the program that I'm using. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to skip over some of the comments. Uh, uh, people are talking about uh, software. That's also fine. Maybe a pipette would be better suited to take water from a specific area. Yes, uh, that is possible. Um, However, uh, what I suggest that you do if you use a pipette, just uh, let me uh, just show you. Um, I have, uh, there are different types of pipettes. I'm, I'm, I'm using this one, but there are also plastic pipettes. I don't know if I have one here right now. Here, here it is. Okay, uh, there are disposable plastic pipettes uh, that also work. Um, and if the tip is too thin, then um, it might get clogged. And in this case, I simply recommend that you cut it off and then you are also able to get some um, some liquid. Um, the problem that I've got here now is, is that I've already you know, gone in here and I've mixed and stirred the water already. So it could be that uh, those places where there are yeah, more paramecia where they accumulated that it's kind of got mixed up a little bit, right? Um, so if you want to take uh, from specific regions, then um, let it stand maybe for a couple of hours first until the cells kind of went to the ideal places. Maybe some, some of them or many of them actually went to the top of the surface. Then you can try to pick up uh, some, uh, some water from the surface as well, um, because sometimes they gather there because the oxygen concentration is the highest. Okay. Yeah, you can record a live stream uh, straight of OBS. Uh, yeah, in, in case uh, any one of you also wants uh, to do some live streams, uh, to simply share some uh, some videos, what you do is, is you, there's this program called OBS Studio that I'm using right now. Um, and uh, yeah, basically uh, you can uh, simply, uh, there's this uh, a certain code that you get from YouTube, uh, from your channel and you put it into OBS Studio um, and then you can start live streaming into YouTube directly um, out of OBS Studio. You're able to see yourself I've, uh, in the OBS Studio. I've also, I see the YouTube chat, so that's why I'm able to read this. Um, and yeah, it, it's very convenient. So if some of you also want to do something like this, I can highly recommend it. It's not so difficult. Once it's set up, um, it, it's not so difficult. Yeah? Um, okay, in the user guide, there are two ways to install the app. I used the way that did not need a CD. Okay, I don't know about you, but I have a dream to have a whole professional microbiology lab in the future. Okay, I can tell you something here. Let me uh, simply talk about this as, as well, because it was actually also one of the questions that I received. Uh, somebody wanted to know, what do you have to do to become a microbiologist? And I say, okay, because I studied uh, uh, microbiology at the university. I got a degree in a master's uh, in, in science in, in re research microbiology. And uh, yeah, that's all you got to do is, is you got to get some training in, in that. But that is not the main issue. Just be aware with any uh, degree or any study or anything that's highly specific you're bound to a laboratory okay you're, you're you need an infrastructure um, so um, I think it's going to be very difficult to do so-called freelance work um, and that's I would say maybe one of the disadvantages a little bit of, of, of studying something very specific that you need a uh, sometimes depending on your area of research uh, quite expensive equipment yeah, and uh, a university or research infrastructure and, and so on. Uh, and uh, this kind of uh, limits you geographically a little bit. So I understand is if you say you want to own your own lab once, uh, yeah, that's uh, then of course you have always access to it. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, they're just uh, they're just like water bears. What's my favorite microorganism? Okay, if this, uh, yeah. Maybe you can. You guys can type in what your favorite microorganism is. Water bears are quite uh, popular. <laughs> okay. 
uh, you should make your own lab in your own room then you tend to acquire more and more and it becomes very useful okay i mean many people who have uh, who are into hobby microscopy i mean have a little table somewhere with the equipment to do some observations so a little home lab um, is is of course always possible because it doesn't take enough uh, a lot of space yeah if you have a, a cupboard somewhere where you can lock things away yeah yeah Good examples here of expect the unexpected. Microscopy sessions are always different. You always have to persist. Yes. Okay. I only have three scopes here. The jars elsewhere. Yep. Okay. Let's go down. Let's go down. I thought uh, I thought that everyone in the live stream were adults. Well, that would be kind of interesting to find out how many children there are actually here. Okay. If you. Uh, um, if you suspect, that's an interesting one. If you suspect oxygen deficiency, uh, would it make sense to add a drop of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2? And uh, finally, I can give an, uh, an answer. Uh, yeah, definitely no, because H2O2 is a disinfectant. It's highly oxidizing. It is correct that um, uh, some or many microorganisms have an enzyme called catalase, which converts hydrogen peroxide to water and to oxygen. Um, so ultimately, hydrogen peroxide will produce oxygen, but um, it will also react with other organic substances and it will kill microorganisms. As a matter of fact, H2O2 is, uh, can be found in many disinfectants, around 3%. Um, so I would probably not add H2O2. Uh, what you can do to add oxygen also has been recommended is, is uh, to actually take a pipette like this, go in and, and bubble uh, air through it for a little, um, a little bit to kind of agitate everything. And this will also enrich it with oxygen. But what I would probably rather do is, is not use quite as much water as I have done, maybe only half as much to make sure that uh, the oxygen that diffuses into the, the water um, is able to also reach the bottom. Okay. Okay, let's have a look here. Um, yeah, I love diatoms. Yep. <laughs> yes, uh, I saw some cyanobacteria, so much life. You may consider to run couples of simple experiments. Yes, again, some discussion going on inside the community. Okay, you know, I'm 68, so, so we see the full age spectrum here. Okay. Um, I have a set of rain buckets and a bird bath outside that I keep uh, wet all year. Uh, always interesting stuff. Lately, uh, Heliozoa, Vorticella, Gastrotrix, and so on. Yes, um, if uh, you want to keep your water microorganisms, you can also, uh, of course, keep an aquarium. And generally, what I find is, is that the more complex uh, the environment, obviously, the more microorganisms you're going to find. So you don't just put pond water in there. You put some rocks in there, some, some, some sediment, and so on. And you try to also keep the water sample um, sufficiently large. Um, then there are plenty of places where microorganisms, different ones, can actually uh, form. Yeah. Okay. Hello, beginners. Question. How uh, does type of water used to prepare specimen samples matter? The short answer is yes. Should I use distilled water? No. Or can I use still water from a plastic bottle? Yes. Or tap water? T tap water depends. So um, generally, um, the following. You want to use, if, um, these, uh, if this water is from a pond, you want to use the same type of water, ideally. Um, what's going to happen is, is it's going to evaporate and you have to refill it with water. In this case, always add a little bit of, uh, of water, tap water only if it is not chlorinated. And some uh, forms, uh, some tap water, especially if it was in, in, in old pipes, um, metal pipes, there are some, some metal ions in there that might also inhibit the growth of microorganisms. So uh, this means tap water, I mean, at least in the place where I live, tap water works. Um, but um, yeah, it's not chlorinated and um, experience has shown that uh, it's not uh, a problem. Metal ions are not a problem. Distilled water, no, because distilled water does not contain any minerals and this uh, definitely will cause more osmotic imbalance. Um, cells yeah, 
will have uh, there's too there too few minerals in in the water unless you can do that if if you just add a little bit of distilled water uh, to, to the water sample then it's not going to make a huge difference right but generally distilled water should be avoided for these things um, a plastic bottle or um, is um, is also possible as a matter of fact uh, I've read in some literature that uh, it's actually recommended if you want to grow uh, certain um, uh, diatoms or certain algae that you use bottled water of course non-carbonated bottled water uh, because again it's a pH thing um, and uh, yeah that, that's also uh, possible yeah uh, you live hunting so microbe hunter microscopy your live hunting organism and debugging of issues are great lab experiment that we will learn what to do and what not to do for own experiments yes i hope so <laughs> yeah because this was actually really not planned um but uh, yeah we'll we'll see next time in any case i want to show you a little bit more then yeah uh would there be organisms in rain um the answer is probably yes but probably not probably yes most likely but in a very probably in a low concentration there are of course there is dust in the air there are bacteria in the air there are organisms in the air uh, we inhale them of course uh, they get stuck in our mucus in the lungs we cough them up not a problem right um, so are there microorganisms in in rain um, when you catch it directly most certainly because as the raindrop falls down um, yeah then uh, they will pick up microorganisms and or maybe it could be that some bacteria in the air act as so-called condensation places for the raindrops even to form yeah so you've got i don't know bacterial cells somewhere and this is maybe the place where uh, yeah the water is able to condense around it why not okay um, but um, i would not say that there are so many in there that it's actually that you're actually able to see something under the microscope yeah that the concentration would be way too low yeah so uh, the answer is yes they are there but uh, at a very low concentration yeah some tap will have stuff in it yes uh, yes distilled water okay well I'm, I'm not so sure about distilled water if you only have distilled water available then only add very little okay yeah. try adding some chili <laughs> yes I, I i've done this uh, before in one of my previous videos i added some some chili and uh, they didn't quite like it the microbes yeah okay okay so again some some comments here now oh, I, I kind of lost it uh, where i lost where i stopped just a second I went all the way down, all the way to the bottom. So just a second. I'm, I have to go down. I, I'm, I just scro accidentally scrolled down all the way in the comments, so I kind of lost where I left off. Okay. Ah, yeah, now I know where I am. Uh, okay. Um, Micro under microscopy, so we should serve our paramecia milk with cereal and yogurt. What about some eggs and piece of toast that would make a good breakfast? Uh, you can try out whatever you want, uh, honestly, um, uh, but be aware that those uh, microbes are only able to eat uh, microscopic food. Okay, and don't overfeed. That's also really important. Yeah. Okay. Scopes are running as good. Don't know. Don't, don't know what. What are what those blue bubbles in microscopes view are? So asking about the blue bubbles. Um, I don't know if you, if this is what you mean here. Those uh, round things that you see here. These are the starch grains of the cereal. Okay, so it's the cereal starch. And you see over here, all of a sudden, yeah, they all. Uh, where where did they go? They went somewhere. Ah, here. Ah, here. You see, sometimes uh, they, they move to the side towards the edge of the cover glass where there is a little bit more oxygen present. Because uh, those cells, um, what they're able to do is, is uh, I can talk about that as well. How do they know into which direction to move, actually? Because in the membrane, they do have receptors. Yeah, here. Ah, see, here they are, they are slightly more of those. Okay. Um, yeah, we can go up a little bit with the magnification. Right now, I see that I'm quite much in the corner here. And uh, 
Okay, let's let's uh, leave it like this here. Um, let's go down the comments again. Uh, thank you for your reply to my comment on your last video. The Amscope scope SM seems like a brilliant choice. I ordered the same scope. Yeah, I think uh, there was a question about which microscope, and then I, I think it's a, the, a stereo microscope. Okay, mixing alcohol with thin PVC glue and it doesn't work. Uh, thank you for trying this. Okay, um, the question was, is, is it possible to mix uh, some alcohol into the PVC glue? Um, and apparently yeah, it's not a good idea because it doesn't work well. Okay, how do you prevent a biofilm before it starts to smell in the sample jars? Okay, um, the thing is the following, sample jars generally should not start to smell bad. If they do start to smell bad, then it could be that this is sulfur what you're smelling. And this is a sign that the whole thing has become anaerobic. Um, not a good thing because uh, this will kill off uh, um, the paramecia and other larger microorganisms and bacteria, some bacteria will start to grow. So suggestion is the following is this, um, you can put a lid on, on top of a jar, okay? But make sure that uh, there is plenty of air in here, okay? And don't fill it up all the way and then put a lid on top. It's gonna grow anaerobic. It's going to start to rot and it's going to start to smell bad. But actually I found that um, mostly it doesn't start to smell bad if there is um, enough air um, able to reach all parts, okay? Um -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of ponds near my house. I usually stay, yeah. Uh, if you don't have a lot of ponds, then what you can try to do is, is you collect some rainwater and you let the rainwater in, in a jar and you let it stand because what's gonna happen over wind and weather, microorganisms will be transported and what you're going to see is after some weeks, maybe that uh, some algae are going to grow diatoms, for example. Yeah, so um, yeah, it, and you're kind of creating almost your own pond by letting a, a jar um, of, of, of rainwater simply stand uh, in, yeah, and then, yeah, you will see that uh, um, it will fill with life over a couple of weeks or months. Okay. Okay. Um, I have the same problem with ponds or lakes around. Uh, we make our own sample like water and plants and let them grow. Okay. Um, at Microbehunter Microscopy, Euromax scope from your reviews interesting. Would you use it uh, for live stream in the future, side by side comparison with the other scopes for viewing? The sample will be fun. That's an interesting one. Yeah, I'd have to set it up next to my table. It's I'm a little bit crowded here uh, to do a live stream. I will tell you the following. Uh, it will. Uh, be very very much similar to to it's a bright field microscope right um so the image uh, will appear to be like this because it's bright field okay um and uh yeah uh, that means uh however i could actually use it because it's re works really well for dark field microscopy uh, dark field i cannot do on the microscope as well on the microscope that i'm using right now because i don't have any place to put in the dark field filters Right. Uh, so in that sense, the Euromax microscope that I made the review in the other video actually complements the, the other microscope that I have here quite well. Yeah. Yep. 50. Yes. Yes, I'm 50. <laughs> I know you're surprised. <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe it's because, yeah. <laughs> yep. The solvents preserve that well. Um, do you have a video on testing the viability of my worm castings? The viability, you mean actually the the uh, the microorganisms found in worm castings? That would be interesting. Paper tape works very well for uh, growing stuff that needs uh, air exchange, okay. And uh, I just wanted to thank you for all your content. Uh, when I found your channel, it re-sparked my interest in microscopy. That's actually the whole point uh, of this. I wanna get people uh, active. Okay, how to create a sample of salt for microsco microscopy as if we use water, is it going to dissolve salt? Should it be dry sample with a cover glass on it? How to create a sample of salt for microscopy as we use water, it is going to dissolve salt. Should it be a dry sample? Um, I don't quite understand the question. Are you talking about uh, making salt crystals? Um, what happens, well, then you simply allow it to dry, okay? If you, oh, the, the image is kind of dark, okay? Um, 
Yeah, so um, if you want to look at salt, what you do is, is you put some salt water on a microscope slide and allow it to dry completely. Then you see some nice salt crystals. Okay. Can you make a video to show the differences between different types of water used to create specimen samples? Um, different types of water. Um, I could do that. However, I am then a little bit cons not concerned, but I think that sometimes maybe you will not that there, the difference that you see might not be due to the water, but maybe due to how the sample develops. You know, um, it could be that if there are certain microorganisms in one sample, that they might start to eat up others, and that this might have a larger effect than the actual water used. So that this, the starter sample, so to say, you know, the starter culture might have possibly, I'm guessing now, a, a pretty strong influence. So I don't know to what extent this would be a fair comparison, but still it's uh, it's something that I could try out. Um, especially maybe when growing algae and diatoms, I know that the type of water that you use is quite important. Yeah. So I too am a beginner to distinguish which element comes from, uh, from water and which should be there and which dirt. In the, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, the more you learn about things, the more you will find use for the microscope. Yes. Uh, generally, also one of the things that I um, find is is that uh, that if you know a little bit more about any pretty much any area, then all of a sudden you're going to find more areas of applications. Yeah. See, and now the paramecia are somewhere again. Gone. They have all drifted off to another direction. There is a little bit of movement over here, uh, and that is a rotifer. Okay. Yeah. It likes to attach itself to a surface, and then it yeah pulls on along other things as well. I once had to do a school presentation with live live microscopy. I checked the sample and it was not very alive. But when I did the presentation in front of the whole class, it was nothing. Yeah, it was painful. Yep, that's the demonstration experiment. Uh, yeah, demonstration factor. Yeah. I'm not the only one here. Yes. Uh, okay. I skip down again. There's many of the comments here. It was a project that I've been working on for weeks and was supposed to be the grand finale and therefore I recommend um, and that's what I usually do uh, is uh, but not today I prepare videos okay uh, that I can show simply as a backup uh, because otherwise there is uh, yeah is the danger always that something you're not able to show s certain things yeah so um, I usually prepare backup videos as well uh, also to um, yeah and if you am not able to show certain things then i can always ref fall back on the, on a video okay okay keeping backups in the future hands on experience in life science is one of the most important aspects in my view and i think i also agree and i think that's one of i'm saying this as a teacher um one of the difficulties that we have as as, as a teacher we have a whole classroom of students 25 students 30 students um and uh, we have to do bi biology lessons so how can we actually make sure that they get hands-on experience um of course we have microscopes uh, to look at things but you see time is limited and uh, there's a syllabus to cover and uh, and there are exams to do and so on so um, we have to be careful that that uh, people don't lose interest in the sciences simply by the way that science is taught okay and that's also one of the reasons why i'm doing uh, microscopy videos and, and things like this to kind of uh, yeah spice up science education a little bit and, and and to put a little bit maybe the interest in the exploration uh, back into yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to have this exploration feeling back again, and that's something that uh, maybe maybe people, students especially these days, often might not get because uh, yeah, they have a they being presented the, the the information by the teacher and by textbooks, and and then they have to study for a test, and this kind of sometimes takes the fun out of things, right? And uh, yeah, but that's something that I would like to also, yeah compensate a little bit is it possible to make a sample of sediment structure for light microscopy i mean something like rock surface to see it under the microscope ah yes i get it um so basically when you have a rock uh, which has been in water there's a biofilm growing on it and when i scratch off this biofilm i'm destroying the natural structure um of um, um yeah of what's there sometimes maybe i'm even killing off some of the organisms um so what you can do um However, this doesn't only works to a certain magnification. Of course, you can put it um, under a stereo microscope. 
Okay, so this is indeed a, a possibility. I've also done that before, but steering microscopes will not magnify to the same extent um, as compound microscopes, obviously. Yeah. But um, if you are interested in observing the, the actual structure and composition of the original biofilm, then this is actually something that you might want to do. Okay. Okay, pretty effective. Okay, molds. Here's a question, how do I get rid of uh, paramecium in my microbial cultures? They seem to dominate in the majority of samples and they end up in. Also just curious what it makes them successful in this. Um, paramecia need a lot of oxygen. Yeah, um, and what you do is, is if you deprive them of oxygen or of food, obviously, uh, then um, they will not be able to grow as much. Or you add, uh, yeah, to water fleas, I think they eat paramecia um, as well. Um, but then again, it's, uh, I would say also a little bit uh, a question of, of luck as well, of, of which organisms there are um, that actually also remove the paramecia. So there is, um, it depends a little bit also what you would like to uh, to observe. Um, I know that paramecia, for example, um, are sold in, in shops uh, as an as aquarium food, fish food. Yeah? So certain fish also eat them, um, uh, eat them as well. Yeah? Uh, I have a, a little secret. Well, maybe not a secret, but I'm afraid of most insects. Okay, um, as a matter of fact, uh, what we're doing in school is every year we're doing the so-called an insect project with uh, our high school students. And uh, we invite an entomologist, he's an insect specialist, and together we go out on the field to hunt for insects using those nets, just like, yeah. Um, he will help us uh, to select the right insects because we do not want to catch protected insects, obviously, and we put them under stereo microscopes. And uh, essentially what, we've, uh, what some of the students told us afterwards, and we're talking about 16, 17 year old students, is that because of this activity, they lost their fear of insects. Because all of a sudden you discover that insects actually, many of them look quite interesting and beautiful under a stereo microscope. Um, so if you have any fears of spiders or any fears of, you kind of feel disgusted of certain insects, um, then try to um, deal with it by exposing yourself more. Don't try to avoid them, but try to expose yourself a little bit more to those. Yeah, uh, you you'll get used to them. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, the 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 this disgust of spiders and in insects is nothing is nothing new. And uh, yeah, that's uh, also something that uh, some of our my my students have. Uh, what are those medium sized bean shaped organisms in your uh, that are whizzing around? I see them often, but I don't know what they are. Um, yeah, I'd have to. Um, yeah, either they're ciliates or flagellates. Um, yeah but they're most certainly eukaryotes. Um, I'd have to check the uh, yeah, identification book for that. Okay. And uh, sometimes um, there are many of them that uh, look very similar. So it might be also difficult to identify. Yeah. So uh, nematodes, multicellular microscopic worms are not the favorite ones, maybe for some of pe some people. Okay. Uh, a gastro trick? Really? You saw a gastro trick here in my sample? No, that would be cool. Okay. Now, gastro tricks are also multicellular um, organisms. Yeah? And uh, I've also found them. They, they look very nice, actually. Yeah. They look, uh, yeah. So let's have a look here. You see over here, there are again more. Yeah. Of these oval shaped ones. So sometimes it's like this, sometimes there is a, for whatever reason, a favorable place here. Maybe it's, uh, it contains some food or the right oxygen concentration or whatever. And then this is where they will gather. Okay. Okay, one of the best streams yet. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> um, the reason why I decided to make, uh, again, one of those, ah, here are some two paramecia. One of those uh, streams is because uh, last uh, week and the weeks before people were asking more about uh, doing like, actual uh, some, some water specimen observation because the previous streams were a little bit technical. I talked about microscopy equipment and I want for a little variation I tried to, yeah, 
uh, do something practical again. You once mentioned that you dilute the Elmer's PVA glue. How much dilution? I diluted it with a little bit of water and I did not measure it out. Um, I just added a little bit simply to make it a little bit more fluid so that it basically didn't pull any more strings. Um, so I would say maybe 10-15% of water right um, and then you have to carefully shake it so that there are not too many bubbles and then you have to it has to stand overnight so that all of the bubbles disappear and that the water kind of gets mixed in but i think i added about 10 to 15 percent and not too much simply to make the glue a little bit more liquid uh, so it's easier to, to manage yeah okay. <laughs> yeah funny some people are desperately trying to find pyramidium like i <laughs> while others uh have them in, yeah, in, in large numbers. I also had them in huge numbers. Uh, uh, they were almost stacked on top of each other. But then today, this is, is, really, is really desperate, honestly. But okay, that's also part of the hobby, okay? Um, yeah. I've read about a blue filter for microscopes uh, that is used to increase light resolution for extreme magnifications, basically visible wave light, yes. Um, though some microscopes actually come with a so-called a blue filter and the, the blue filter will give uh, the specimens a more neutral color and it might also or will also increase the sharpness a little bit, okay. Um, how can you tell the difference about a rotter for egg or a cyst? Well, the rotter for eggs, I mean, I've, I've seen them actually once, or they, they actually, it looks kind of, uh, there is a structure in it, and then you can actually see after a couple of minutes that the rotter comes out. So there is a, a um, yeah, um, it's a little bit difficult for me to describe this. Uh, uh, but uh, when, for example, some rotifers dry up, what they will do is, is they will form this, uh, this kind of a cyst and then you can actually see that there is a, a certain structure um, in, in there and then when you add water again, then the rotifer is going to expand and it's going to uh, ob obtain its original shape again. Huh? So, and some rotifers, they actually have, uh, I've seen some rotifers that have the eggs in their body and they were, they were more smooth somehow. Than, than, than the cyst. But again, I'm, I'm, there are so many different types of rotifers out there that I don't want to, to, to generalize. Yeah? Uh, quite often I see what I think is Brownian motion. I've not seen it in your wet slides. Uh, I think uh, you have to really go up with the magnification a lot. And then you are able to see that some of the um, yeah, particles will move. Here, I think the reason why I do not see so much Brownian motion is because um, it's a little bit more viscous. I have taken some sample from, from the wheat grain, from the cereal, and it's very viscous and slimy. And this high viscosity also limits the Brownian motion a little bit. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why we could not see much, much here. Okay, so you know what? Uh, what time is it? One twenty-six, almost one and a half hours. I'm, I'm going to give it another try, and then oh, I have no idea. <laughs> Last try um, to, uh, yeah. Last try to make a, a specimen here. Maybe I am going to use now the pipette. Okay, maybe a little bit uh, from the top. Okay, but I know that most of them actually can be found. Yeah around solid material. So let's try this here as well. Okay, so two cover glasses. So the left one is from the top, the other one is from the bottom. This time without any, this time without much solid material around it. So, and let's have a look at those two. But my expectations are not very high, <laughs> I have to tell you. So let's switch over again. The mic microscope scene view, we have to close the condenser, we have to go down with the light and yeah, bubble, bubble, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. Um, so at least we have now, we can now conclude that, oh, there are a few here. I already wanted to say uh, we, uh, we could conclude that there are no paramecia on the surface of the water, but actually there are. Okay. You know what I'm going to try to do? Yeah, actually there's three of them here. 
Hmm. Okay, you know what I'm gonna... Hmm. Should I? Should I not? Let me see if I've got some tissue paper here. I'm going to reduce the water a little bit because I do want to show... Let me, let me quickly check the other, the other one. You see from the bottom, this is where there are the starch grains. Okay. Yeah, and there's some others as well here. So what I'm going to try now is the following. I'm going to try to take a little bit of uh, I'm going, uh, water away. Simply to reduce. You can actually see maybe some of the things start to stream off. Simply to reduce a little bit the, the movement possibility of the, of the cells. So always try, let's try to keep a few of them at least in, 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 in focus somewhere. Again. Yeah, so I'm using some tissue paper to remove a little bit of liquid. Ah, look. Here are a few more. Okay, and uh, hmm. yeah, there's still uh, there's still too much water here, so they're still able to move uh, around uh, quite uh, quite a bit. Okay, and I'm not going to give up. I'm going to actually try to remove yet more water. Maybe I'm going to simply remove the slide and do that here on the table. Yeah, I've also done something like this, and then all of a sudden I also sucked out all of the paramecia, which is also not <laughs> ideal. Um, hmm. Let me get some more fresh tissue paper. So I'm, I'm trying to basically contact the edge of the cover glass here. So let's give this here a try. Yeah, still a lot of water. Ah, this could be, look, there is some, some solid plant material in here and this might actually lift up the cover glass a little bit. And uh, yeah. If you are lucky um, and if you're able to uh, to catch uh, the so-called exponential growth phase, then you're actually also able to see some of the Paramecia divide. Um, but here we already see a little bit, at least this one here on top, that this one is already compressed, pressed flat a little bit. It's also not able to move quite as quickly anymore. So where is it here? This one, for example. Yes. Yeah. So it already starts to look a little bit more two-dimensional and then you're able to see the inside the cell organelles a little bit better. Yeah, yeah and you can also see now uh, the bacteria around it. Um, those little dark dots the are the bacteria. You know what, I have to open a little bit more to make it a little bit brighter. Also kind of shows a little bit how flexible uh, those cells are. Okay. Up. No, it's somewhere. No, no idea what that is. Okay. These all these uh, long things here also seem to be some kind of uh, bacteria. Yeah, and they're gliding. <laughs> So let's go down a little bit with the magnification again. And uh, yeah, I think this uh, sample is a little bit more promising. Here's another one. Okay. So refocus, I'm, I'm always a little bit off. Yeah, I think you get the idea. What I can up oh, I bumped into <laughs> yeah, these are lots of diatoms that we see here lots of diatoms 
Now here it is again. So, um, I just want to show you as long as it's now standing, if you up the arrow, okay, do you see this long structure here, that's uh, the mouth, so to say, and it will suck in, um, yeah, cells, ah, like this one over here, and then so occasionally if you're very lucky, you're able to see a food vacuole forming here, and starting to be, yeah, formed, and then those food, the round food vacuoles are then inside the body of, or just inside the cell. Right, so you can actually see it's kind of, kind of difficult to see right now, but uh, food is being sucked in, and here this was a food vacuole or one of those round uh, structures being formed, and this is where the food is digested. Yeah. It's actually quite nice to see if you know what to look for. Yeah. Yeah. All of those, many of these round things are food vacuoles, right? Food is being sucked in. And then um, a food vacuum will form here and it will be pinched off. And maybe you could see that there is uh, something pumping over here. That's the so-called the contractile vacuole. Just a second here. Did you see this? It's some, it appeared, this round thing appeared and it started to disappear very quickly. Look here. Pop, and now it's gone. It's, it's a so-called contractile vacuole which pumps out water yeah, from, from the cell. You see a little bit, yeah. Again, yeah, food is being here, here again, the, the starts to swell up and then it collapses very quickly. Boom, and now it's collapsed. So, this is uh, the, yeah, it's it's a pump that pumps out the contractile vacuole, uh, pumps out water from the cell so that the cell does not burst. Yeah, food being sucked in here, and then I don't know, here we don't see it so well, but occasionally we were able to see over here, look at this round thing over here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's being formed and then it starts to be pinched off and then it's uh, inside the cell, and then it's being digested. Yeah. So this is uh, yeah. So luckily, I was able to find <laughs> one paramecium uh, a little bit in, in at higher magnification. I'm using now my sixty times objective. Yeah. In case you're interested uh, in the magnification, and. Uh, yeah, I'm going to quickly go through the remaining, last remaining comments. If there is a question or not, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there's communication going on between the, the, the form. Ah, the salt water. Okay. I want you to use the salt water. Okay, I gotta do that. Oh, yes. Okay, I promised at the beginning, I remember. So I'm gonna add some salt water, but uh, this could take some time for the salt water to actually um, uh, move through the, um, the slide. So very quickly, I'm going to add a small amount of salt water, which will actually not be a very pleasant thing but it can sometimes help to actually um, yeah, concentrate the paramecia. So I'm, I'm taking a little bit of salt water here. Let's add it here on the side. And I think uh, the water should start streaming. Up, yes, see how the water flushes And uh, yep, and this is the effect on the paramecium here. This is the effect we call this osmosis, and the cell is dead. <laughs> yeah, because essentially what happens is, is that the salt water will pull out by osmosis uh, all of the yeah uh, the water, um, and uh, th that's it. Okay, this is uh, an explanation why salt water actually preserves food. This is because uh, cells are, at, are not able to survive. Yeah. Yeah. So you see that it kind of shrunk up a little bit and yeah, that's it. Yeah. So a little bit, uh, yeah, this was a quick one. <laughs> yeah. Yep, but I don't know where the others are. Yeah. So 
that's that's it um if you want interested in the effect of salt water i did make a video where i mixed some salt water with blood you can actually see the red blood cells shrink up um, a little bit and uh, um, if you add salt water to onion cells you can also see the onion cells the inside at least uh, shrink up i made videos of this as well okay so wow this is a long live stream again i think I, i'm slowly going to to call it quits again okay um I'm just checking if there are any more. I think there are lots of comments this time, which is nice. Okay. So what magnification was it? So this one is now 20 times magnification. This is now 40 times magnification. And the other one was 60 times magnification. This one over here. Yeah. So the bacteria were, could be seen quite well was 40 and 60 times. Okay. So this is uh, yeah thing here. Okay, I'm quickly going through the comments again. Okay. Uh, do you happen to know when paramecium first uh, developed? A Google search says uh, 65 million years and other. Um, I'll be very honest with you. Um, whatever protozoa existed many millions of years ago were not the same that existed nowadays. So I guess it, it's really a question of where do you want to draw the line, right? Um, so um, yeah, paramecia are currently living organisms and uh, several million years ago, these were not paramecia. These were the ancestors of the paramecia. So um, it, it's, I think, also a little bit of a question of, 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 of definition. From what point onward do you actually start to call it paramecium? But uh, the, the formation is a gradual process. And uh, um, I guess it's also a certain um, question of, of where to draw the line. And uh, for them, what I would uh, say, considering the fact that the protozoa are single-celled eukaryotes, we'd have to go back maybe back to the time when eukaryotes first developed. Now, I don't know the number in my head, um, but it must have been at around that time. Uh, and there is this so-called the theory of endosymbiosis, which basically means that uh, uh, you know, eukaryotes formed uh, when uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts uh, first start to, to be incorporated in a cell. And this goes back, of course, several million millions years ago and then you could basically say that must have been the earliest point uh, for paramecia and other eukaryotes uh, to form okay but what i'm going to do now is is uh, i'm going to really call it quits now okay um yeah I'm, I'm i'm happy that at least i was able to show you one large paramecium at the end <laughs> yeah um and uh I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if you uh, want to um, comment uh, later on, the video will be online again um, as always. Um, and uh, the comments, uh, it takes uh, the comments usually a day or two for them also to appear on YouTube. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, uh, yeah, hope that you liked it again, <laughs> even though it was a little bit uh, yeah unexpected uh, for me, but maybe uh, I'm able to present you something next week. Um, uh, I'll, I'll see. Okay, folks, uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, I wish you happy micro hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. And uh, keep on checking on this channel and also on my other channel because I'm, of course, uh, uploading videos on a regular basis. Bye-bye, everyone, and uh, see you next week. All the best. Mm -hmm.